recently. In fact, the mitochondrial DNA work suggested we had a common ancestor in Africa that lived about 150,000 years ago, and that, of course, is very close to the age of these new Ethiopian finds. But unfortunately, it's very unlikely there will be any DNA preserved in material of this age, and, and particularly in the kind of African environments. For DNA preservation, and uh, for example, Neanderthals come to mind here, there are some Neanderthal fossils that have produced DNA, but that material has been preserved in very cool and dry conditions. The material from, and also much younger, maybe 40,000 years old, 30,000 years old, this material is too old, and also the African environment, unfortunately, is unlikely to preserve DNA. Now, let's then talk about the Out of Africa theory that you've briefly mentioned. So this is the idea that we, um, modern humans, um, originated in Africa and then spread from there. Um, so many scientists believe this, some, some people don't, and believe that we actually evolved in different places all across the world uh, simultaneously. How do you think that these fossils sort of add weight to your Out of Africa theory? Mm. Well, I think if we look at the shared features of, of people around the world today, what are the shared features of our species? One of the debates has been, have those features evolved in only one place, particularly Africa, or have they evolved in several regions from distinct populations? And I think this helps us to, to focus in on Africa, that Africa is the only place that has the transitional stages, if you like, leading up to Homo sapiens, and showing the first appearance of these modern human features. What it doesn't answer, of course, is what happened later. So within the last 100,000 years, modern people spread out of Africa and they spread to other parts of the world, uh, to China, to Java, into Europe. And of course in Europe, those early modern people who became the Cro-Magnons, they encountered the Neanderthals, we believe, in some way. Some people believe they interbred with the Neanderthals. So at that younger part of the story, it's still possible that those modern humans who came out of Africa somehow mixed with the Neanderthals in Europe. Uh, personally, I think if that happened, it happened on such a small scale that we can effectively ignore it. I think that was, you know, it, it, if it happened at all, was a, a detail of the story. The point is that the shared features of modern humans, our species-specific characteristics, evolved in Africa. But there are still questions because we can't say, was it just one part of Africa? Ethiopia was clearly very important, but perhaps the modern behaviour, aspects of modern behaviour, the use of art and symbolism, the development of complex language, Things like that which also characterise modern humans. There's evidence, for example, that South, South Africa was important in that part of the story. So it may be that actually Africa contributed different parts of, hum of modern humanity, uh, even from different regions and at different times. So these people 160,000 years ago may have looked pretty modern, but we don't know if they were behaving in a modern way. Some of that may have come later. Right, okay, because I was going to briefly mention um, uh, one of the skeletons that have been found well, quite a while ago now in Australia. It was um, 60,000 years old, um, and scientists took the DNA of, uh, from that skeleton, and it didn't match the DNA that is found in living humans uh, today, um, suggesting that 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 DNA actually evolved in Australia where the fossils were found, not in Africa where we are thought to have originated from. I mean, how do you respond mm. to that kind of research? Yes, I mean, there's been more research since then on this material from Mungo. Uh, for example, the dating evidence now, the dating evidence suggests that the skeleton in question, Mungo 3, is actually probably about 42,000 years old, so it's younger than, than, than was thought. Um, and the DNA work, uh, I and colleagues published a, a note where we questioned the the conclusions reached in that paper. First of all, we were cautious about whether it really was genuinely ancient DNA that had been found, because uh, this was a burial in sand in Australia, and um, we thought it possible there could be contamination involved, and it might be more recent contamination. But even if we accept the DNA as genuine, we reanalyzed the tree building procedures that had been used in the original paper, and our conclusion was that if you put more modern samples in, the, um, the Mungo specimen actually is, is part of the range of modern humans. There's actually nothing very distinctive, nothing that really challenges, from our point of view, the out of Africa theory. So you don't think it was a, 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 another species running in line with... No, absolutely not, and if it was, it was one that looked exactly like modern humans who'd come out of Africa. <laughs> Now, with these skulls that, you've, uh, that have been found in, in Ethiopia, um, a lot of tools were also found in association with them. There were cut marks on the skulls as well. Can you tell us a little bit about these? Yes, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic site, not just for these human fossils, but of course the behavioural evidence that uh, in 
layers, these are lakeside sediments, so there were lakes there, and these people were living around these lakes. But also there's evidence they were butchering big game. Uh, there are uh, antelope, buffalo, um, even a number of hippopotamus skeletons that have been butchered. Now we don't know if these people were hunting hippos or whether they were scavenging them, but they were certainly getting primary access to carcasses of hippos. And hippos are pretty dangerous animals, so if, if they actually were exploiting hippos, they would have to be very well organised to do that. Um, maybe also it explains that big body size. They may have had to have been very, very strong. Just here, I'll just move it over. Yeah, there's a reconstruction, but uh, obviously a fair bit of imagination used in that <laughs> reconstruction. Um, we don't know anything, of course, about the, the hair form and the skin colour. One would guess the skin colour would be dark, but we don't know, of course, what kind of hair these individuals would have had. Uh, but maybe the face gives a reason. It's a pretty good representation probably of what the basic shape of the face was like. Uh, very wide and flat, uh, quite a small nose by, uh, by modern standards. And very different to, say, the Neanderthals who lived in Europe mm. and evolved in Europe. They had a very opposite shape to the face, a very pulled out face with a big nose. So this is a very different sort of face shape. So there's the evidence of exploitation of big game. Uh, and there's also the stone tools themselves. And they found several hundred stone tools. And they do show an interesting mixture of Middle Stone Age tools, which you'd expect there to be at that time, but also um, big hand axe tools, hand axe tools which you might expect more to be found with these earlier forms. So just as the skulls, in a sense, have some ancestral features, even in the technology, even in the stone tools, there may be signs of, that, uh, of the people from who they had evolved. They had carried on making the hand axes of their ancestors, and indeed those hand axes are very good butchery tools, for, maybe for butchering hippos. Right, okay. And, and have such tools been found before with, with things of these age, with human remains of these age? Well, it's an interesting mixture, yes. In southern Africa that would be an unusual combination, but in East Africa, yes, in Ethiopia there are sites which combine the Middle Stone Age with the hand axe tools. And of course there's one other interesting feature I didn't mention yet, which is the cut marks, that all of these three skulls have evidence of human modification on the bones. They have cut marks and even in some cases polish on them. And um, it doesn't look like it's straightforward cannibalism, which is known from some other uh, examples, even modern humans and Neanderthals, where there seems to be possible cannibalism. In this case, it looks like the bones were not just cut up and, 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 and then thrown away. They have been kept, they have been conserved for a period of time and handled over a long period of time, which is partly why they have this polish on them. So these people were keeping those bones for ritual or ceremonial reasons, maybe the bones of their ancestors or, or bones of a child that they were keeping with them, uh, or maybe they were using these bones in some kind of ceremonies or rituals. That does obviously imply a, a level of complexity there mm. in social behaviour. Have you heard of similar things before? Well, certainly modern humans, people around the world, do mm. keep human bones uh, for various reasons. And so we've got evidence here of some kind of treatment of the dead going on. Mm. I want to see whether anybody else has got, wants to, to say anything in the audience or, or ask anything. Oh, let me just come over with the mic because otherwise our web audience won't hear you. <laughs> Hello, Professor Stringer. Sorry, I arrived rather later than after you started Hello, speaking. Mom. <laughs> Hello, um, I, I, I was rather interested that I hadn't heard there was any postcranial matter found, and I wondered if, if any pelvises or any of the larger leg bones or arm bones had been found, or if it was at this stage just a scatter of cranial matter. Mm. Yes, unfortunately it looks like there is no postcranial material, certainly none mentioned in the papers. So uh, we don't have remains of the rest of the skeleton and that of course is a shame because uh, it would be nice to know how modern these people were right through their skeletons. And of course we'd be in a better position to estimate their body size and their height, although they're very big. We can't say how tall they were, things like that. So unfortunately at the moment, no, it seems to be just the head parts. And maybe that also is a reflection of the special treatment they gave to the, to the, to the head. In, in whatever they were doing with these bones. Um, because if, they, if all of the skeleton had been deposited in the place at mm -hmm. the same time, could it be that just skulls would be preserved? Presumably the whole body would remain preserved. Yes, you would expect that um, you know, at least if it was a whole skeleton, um, you know, at least if it was a whole skeleton originally, it would be very unusual to just get the head preserved in that way and nothing else. That would be very exceptional. So it seems that those parts were deposited separately from, from the rest of the skeleton. Does anybody else want to? Yeah. 